Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. You know, every weakness is an opportunity to build strength. Every failure is an opportunity to learn. You have to start looking at success the right way. And that means we have to start looking at our weaknesses in the right way, at our failures. A lot of people beat themselves up about the things that they're weak, the areas that they're weak in. I know I have. But when we identify a weakness, instead of feeling depressed about it or anxious about it or upset about it, negative about it, feel excited about it. Feel positive about it. I liken it to uh, the entrepreneurial spirit. Do you, do you know what that is? That Entrepreneurs are innovators. They recognize, they're problem solvers, right? They recognize market niches. There should be restaurants in this area. The entrepreneur says, hey, maybe I'll start a restaurant in this area. You know, there, there should be more shoe stores around here. The entrepreneur says, you know what, I'm going to start a fucking shoe store. <laughs> they fill the need that people have. And they search for weaknesses in markets to fill that niche. And that's incredibly exciting uh, for some people. And they get really good at identifying these types of market niches and weaknesses in various markets that could be built up, could be filled. Somebody who has that foresight, I mean, is, is you know, they're pioneers. I do this in the gym. I'm always looking for my weaknesses. I mean, I want to build on my strengths, but I look for the weaknesses. Where am I weak? And that's what I'm working on. I got weak shoulders, I'm going to blast shoulders today. We build our strength through a, a level of suffering. I talk about this a lot. That suffering is the hardship of life that, that weathers us, that teaches us the lessons that we need to be taught. Instead of being, beating ourselves up about those lessons that we learned, be thankful. Be thankful for your wisdom. Be thankful for your scars. You can't see them. I got scars all over my face, all over my body. I used to be ashamed of them. Now I'm proud of them. Each one has a story and shows I've survived. You know, when I'm looking for, when I'm diagnosing a bike, I don't do a lot of service for people. We're a fabrication shop, a restoration shop. I have an old Triumph, uh, it's a T160, 1976. This is the three-cylinder Trident. This is kind of the holy grail for Tridents. The T160 is different than the T150. <laughs> the, the T160 guys look down their nose at the T150. The T150 is the previous years of Tridents, and they made many of them. The T160 was made in 1976, and I believe in 77, 78, somewhere around there, the factory burnt down. This was the attempt at Triumph to make a bike to compete with the Japanese. In, at the time, uh, early 70s, late 60s, Honda had put out their inline for destroying the British bikes. The British bikes, BSAs, Triumphs. Um, Nortons, they were the kings of the roads. They were the fastest. They were your, your crotch rockets, you know, your sport bikes. Honda fucked them all up. They came out with the CB750. It destroyed everybody. It, it changed the game. The first year the CB750 came out, the inline four, uh, they sold like 1.5 million units. That's a lot. It's, it's a, an amazing milestone for a bike to sell that much in one, in, in one year. The Trident, the bike here behind me, was uh, the one that was, was Triumph's 
kind of last ditch effort to reclaim their spot. You know that line in that song by Notorious B.I.G. where he says, I want my spot back. That's what Triumph said. I want my spot back. <laughs> and then the factory burned down. And then after that, it was bought by some philanthropist, and it's really not the same company. Whatever. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about, except for the fact that when I restore a bike like this, I'm looking for the weaknesses. I will enhance what's already there, but I need to look for what's, what needs to be fixed, what, what, what's not there, and add it to it to make this complete. That's the whole name of the game. When you diagnose a bike, you have to be, it's a humble experience. You're looking for what's wrong and you have to admit it to yourself. Why would you lie? You want it to be fixed. Why would you lie to yourself about what needs to be fixed on your motorcycle? You wouldn't. That would be silly, right? <laughs> Especially if you knew what it was. And the whole time you're lying to yourself that it's something else. Kicking yourself, not understanding what's wrong. Wishing you could ride, but the bike is broken. But you know what it is. You're just refusing to go after it for some reason. People do this with their lives. Many of the people out there that have weaknesses and failures know exactly what those weaknesses or failures are. It's not a mystery. They don't need to be Sherlock Holmes wondering, well, what's wrong with me? They know what's wrong with them. But the ironic thing about it is, is a lot of people lie to themselves, protect that weakness. No, it's fine. Arms chopped off and it's bleeding. No, I'm fine. <laughs> I mean, that's an extreme case, but people do that with their psychosis, with their mentality. And just like in the gym, when we identify a weakness, we go after it. You attack it. And it's not fun for me on shoulder day because I feel like a pussy. I'm not one of those guys that's putting on tons of plates <laughs> and, 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 and lifting up. I got like little baby plates on there. I got weak shoulders, but you got to start somewhere. You can't ignore it. And I've noticed over this last year, my shoulders have been getting bigger. It's exciting. I saw a picture of myself in, uh, in a tank top and I uh, was surprised. I was like, whoa, look at my shoulders. One of my weaknesses is now turning into one of my strengths. It's like with my legs. I used to have horribly weak legs. I hated leg day. Oh, I hated leg day. And I'd go in there and lift little baby weights. And it would hurt. I'd be sore for days. I hate leg day. I think everybody hates leg day. I got injured on my shoulder for like three months. All I could do was legs. I went in and worked out legs every day. Six days a week, I worked out legs. Got to do something, man. I got to keep fucking on my program. I got to work out. I got to expend some energy. Being in the shop isn't good enough. And I went after the weakest area of my body. It was my legs. I had little, little, little spaghetti legs. Little noodles. Now my legs are uh, got muscles. For the first time in my life, I got nice big leg muscles. I can... Put those plates on and squat all kinds of weight. You have, have to start somewhere. You have to recognize those weaknesses and go after them and turn those weaknesses into your strengths. I don't know. Hopefully this makes sense in a roundabout way. Thanks for watching.